I'm going to be real, I messed with lighting for 30 minutes, and I still have no fucking idea why my camera's doing this shit. So, welcome to my hell. Alright, so now, what I'm wearing today, for the purpose of the video, is my cool, uh, Walrus onesie. So, pretty damn cool, am I right? Also. So, today is about people I do not like. Shocking. I know, yeah, I know, just bear with the lighting. It's really all I can do for today. Do that or forget about the video and there would not be a video for a week. So that would kind of suck. All right. Normally, I just read off the script and have something for you to say, uh, look at or something or listen to in the background, but there's a couple thing elements of this script that require you to look at me for a moment. Right? So there are a lot of people in this world, some smart, some fast, some technically inclined. But sometimes there are just people who, you know, crawl out of the <laughs> crawl out of the hole in the ground their father mated with, like an orc from Lord of the Rings. So this video is about those people. I've met some some of them, some recent, some uh, archetypes I've never met, and, you know, and hope to God I never do. And so let's get started with this. So there was a dude who came into my work last night. So you want to spare you the ASMR of me just burping the mic, just bruh, right? And I'm trying to be vague about this one in particular, uh, what he said, because I'm not sure if it's status Right, it's a pretty common word when referring to these groups, for this to this group, but I'm not sure on its status, if you know what I mean. So I'd prefer not to say it even in quotations, just because I want to cover my ass here. Like, there's no reason for me to ever read Huckleberry Finn. I'm not really a, top, <clears throat> uh, a Mark Twain fan, and really there's just no reason for me, I suppose, to stick my neck out for a book I'm not getting paid to read. Um, it's not anywhere near what's been said in Tom Sawyer, Tom, Tom Sawyer, but like, it's just, I'm not sure of its status, All right? Now, plus it would kind of just give away where I work at the moment, so I'd prefer not to. All right, so a few nights ago, uh, we had this guy come in and he's like, you know, we're just busy. People are queuing up. Like, it's, you know, the Kamikaze Scotsman bit from Monty Python. We, you know, killed, you know, 10 cars, but, like, really, yeah, YouTube, it's just an, a euphemism for uh, time was wasted on a meter, so just bear with, you know, bear with me, uh, Susan. Um, but, yeah, so many people, dude probably waited 20 minutes for a shake, and that was it. I was like, I don't fucking understand that. Maybe I just don't understand brand loyalty. I said to my boss yesterday, you know, and, you know, I had to, you know, kind of take an hour to clean, so I had to stop, and, you know, just as I was about to finish, and clean the rest, and help my, uh, co-workers, because there were that many cars, it literally extended into the next parking lot, it was insane, we still don't know why, it was Wednesday, no one has that on a Wednesday, or not usually, all right? And I was really like, I'm the idiot who signed up for, like, you know, serving sandwiches during, you know, a particular event of... I, I'm Again, I'm trying to be vague. I'm explaining certain things. I'm the idiot who signed up for 12 to 9, uh, you know, for a certain amount of time. So, duh. Okay. So, now this dude comes in and asks for and orders his food. And then, while my brain is fried from the collective amount of people to finger-looking-good status, because um, I'm autistic, we get rather overstimulated is the word. I prefer mentally fried from the amount of people and sheer volume. So you imagine it'd be kind of counterproductive for someone who's autistic to work in fast food, but it's really all I'm real qualified at this point to work at. I've not got, you know, CDL license or, you know, a license at all or, you know, any like anything to do jobs that wouldn't require me to deal with the absolute 
you know, general populace of idiots. So, you know, oh, by, by the way, if you ever want to find out how stupid the people are around you working fast food, I have, you know, asked them questions looking at them, and they're like, yes. I'm like, which one do you want? And they're like, yes. Which one? I was like, oh, that one. I'm like, or you get people who's like, I want this sandwich. I'm like, okay, I key it in. They're like, where's my meal? It's like, doesn't it come with fries? Not unless you order the meal, dipshit. Dude, that dude was awful. And this video is more about complaining about people than anything else. So, just so you know, I am me. I, I really get annoyed with people at certain times of the day. After, you know, 5 o'clock is when it gets bad. Right? And also sounds counterproductive, but I don't let them know that. Now, so we have this dude, you know, we have the manager. Uh, we have the manager in training, and then we have me. We walk to where the, uh, you know, food's being, you know, shelled out so we can put it in bags and serve it to the customers. And so I'm... I'm wondering where everything is needing to be because I am quite literally fried. So I need to know, wh you know, where we're at. And I see the name of the sauce and we're talking about the sauce that this dude ordered for his sandwich. Right? That has to come in a separate container. And the dude behind us says, yeah, I want that, you know, bad word sauce. I can't, I don't know how to explain it other way. If this wasn't a recording, I'd probably just say it, just because, again, it's not, I don't think it's a bad word. It's said pretty commonly in reference to the people. Uh, I just don't feel like, you know, getting flack for that, so I'm not going to. The thing he said was in reference to the name of the sauce, right? The name of the sauce is a different language, right? So, he's saying, like, oh, that sounds, I have no idea what the sauce name means, right? You know, someone could say, you know, you know, uh, el, negro, el negro de pantalones, and you'd say the black pants, right? But then you have some asshole who doesn't understand language, right? Who uh, looks at, who looks at, you know, a word, and he's like, that sounds like a funny little racist thing I like to say. And then they say it. It's like, the fuck is wrong with you? Now, obviously, you know, after this guy, you know, said what he said, you know, we're, we're like, wow, that's kind of fucked up. And then he has the audacity to say, yeah, I don't care about offending people. He's not Southern. He's probably from my area. It's just incredibly stupid to say, right? Because, like, there's this comedian... I follow a bunch of comedians, right? It's one of my favorite pastimes to just watch comedy and learn about people, learn about things. And he's like, you know, normally people who are racist say, I'm not racist, but... And then they say something racist, right? And someone corroborated this and, you know, said, like, yeah, if you're telling a joke, you should never have to. Right. So, yeah, this dude, I really hate him. I don't like him because that's a stupid thing to say. You know, and you'll see what, you know, that will come back, you know, in another bit. But, like, yeah, it's just, ugh, fucking hate people like that. Right. So, next page, space bar, indent, space bar, right? All right, next we have a peak Karen on the list. I don't know her name. I don't know, I, my memory's a bit fuzzy on the situation. All I rem I think I do remember one thing since writing the script. However, I do uh, kind of, I think I remember the general sequence of events, because believe me, this woman had a sequence of events, not just one singular focused episode of Karenism. No, no, it was a sequence, right? right? I used to work at a coffee shop, a pretty big one, right? And, you know, I'm, and for the first, the first time I remember her coming in, 
this is the part I had to remember, but I think she came in because she, uh, you know, there wasn't enough caramel in her fucking coffee, right? Which is a pretty, you know, co okay, cool, it's still recording. I was like, fuck, I don't know what happened. So, that's a pretty thing in car co uh, coffee shops. I think there are different kind of people who go to coffee shops. They're crazy ass motherfuckers. I don't know what they're thinking, right? And this person, right? You know, it's like, there's not enough caramel in my drink. It's like, well, an extra pump is 10 cents. They're like, well, I already paid, so just put it in there. Yeah. And she comes back uh, the first time. The first time she comes back, she's like, there's not enough caramel in my drink. Make it again. You know, yeah, that's how, that's when you, that's when you know it's not going to be a good encounter at a coffee shop. It's like, make it again. And she says, and we make her with more caramel, right? Because we're just trying to peace because there's no manager on shift. There never was, you know, in the afternoon. And she fucks off to wherever, right? She comes back a second time. Now, let me check the notes, because, again, a bit fussy at the moment. So, uh, third time, second time. Okay. Yeah, yeah, too much ice in her coffee. Too much ice. I don't fucking get it, man. Because at that particular, I don't know where it's like at other people's jobs, or if there's a reason that you know, coffee places in general tend to stick to about the level of ice in the coffee, but what I was told by my manager was that if you put no ice, the reason they charged at that particular place for no ice um, was because they had to use more coffee to fill the cup. So that's why you just normally put, unless it's, you know, no ice, you just put as little ice as possible. In fact, one lady would come in asking for as little as possible because she didn't want to pay the 50 cents at our store for extra ice, even though she drove an expensive car and could probably do, you know, afford to do that. I know my, my workplace's rules were you know stringent, weird, and cheap, but employees, man. I don't advocate just straight up you know complying it without, without dissonance, but... You, you, sometimes I had some dissonance at that job, right? Now, the third time, she came back. This was the peak moment. If the two before that were like a warm-up game, this one was the all-star game where she was just slamming dunks into the Karen basketball hoop. I'm not a basketball fan. That was just the analogy I went with. And she wedged her... She literally got on foot, walked around. It's fucking cold outside. I think it's like February. This bitch is out here just trying to get on foot and wedge herself in between the cars in the current uh, the current uh, line, right? Because our lobby is closed. It was, I think, like 20, 21 early. So it's like everything's still like closed in certain places. And she's literally just trying to wedge her way in. For God knows why. Well, we'd find out, but like, yeah, I have no idea why she didn't just wait like everyone else. Karen, I suppose. And so she wedged herself in and then said, my coffee's too dark. We don't have all the time to you know delve into the woman's psychology for why she phrased it that way. Or if there was even an ulterior ulterior uh, uh, meaning to that entirely. And my uh, shift manager, the only one, a guy who's like two years younger than me at the time. So it's like, what the fuck kind of, it's like, it's kind of like, the again, I know I referenced Sean Mullane. He's like, you just, or, you know, have a slightly older child in charge. So like you have this guy, he's two years younger than me. And he's like, ma'am, it's darker because the ad, the ice adds some lightness to it and shit, which what I've come to know is kind of true, it especially happens with things like, you know, cold brew or like, you know, Americanos, you add water or ice to taste, right? And we had to make it again, but she couldn't understand and she kept just complaining and, yeah, what a chocolate, right? Now, the third one is less so than the last two, but it's someone I've never met, and hope to God I never do. 
Now, there's, I'm autistic, right? And there are some people who feel like they have to advocate for me, even though they don't know me. They probably don't know anyone who's autistic, or worse so, they're like, my cousin's autistic. I don't know how close y'all are with your cousin, but like, I, mine are like 45 minutes away. I know them by name, and that's, that's not, listen, there's more relationship to that, but I'm not real close to my cousins, is the thing. I don't call them up and I'll be like, hey, real sorry about that time you got third degree burns. Do you need anything? Granted, a family member probably should, but like, fuck, man. That's, I, I do the, I do the, you know, the obvious cool person or that cool person, the normal person thing and say like, bro, Aunt K, that sucks. Like, do you, are you guys, is he good? Is he like going to survive? Because, like, that's, but I'm not, like, real close to my cousins, right? So, I don't know why these people insist on saying, you know, things like, you know, what, like, I don't know why they insi insist on being, like, oh, my stepbrother's autistic. I'm, like, unless you're real chummy with your stepbrother, like, really shut the hell up. <laughs> like, you know, he can speak for himself, first of all. Unless he's low functioning. However, if they're like me and they're high functioning, they can speak for them fucking self, you know. You know, we don't need you to talk, tell us how, whatever our condition is. Right? So, there was one time my sister did that, right? But it's because the teacher at her college said, Autistic people don't have a sense of humor. <laughs> Little shit does she know. And, right, because I know an autistic comedian, not personally, but, like, I learned of it through a book I read of his. So it's like, yeah, dude, I don't know what you're fucking talking about. Literally, I love the fucking jokes I hear sometimes. So it's like, what do you define as a sense of humor? Do you define it as being able to laugh at something or make a craft a joke? I imagine I can do both, but that's really not for me to decide, now is it? Uh, definitely the uh, la the uh, former is you know, laughing at something. I do love that. Right? And, you know, here, let me see. Yeah, it's like, and then those fucking people say, you know, do things like, what if one of them is here? What if one of them is here? Right? Because I know I had a co-worker who jokingly said, you know, you're not autistic, right? Because you talk too much. And I said to him, uh, and I was like, oh, sorry, I forgot my, you know, you know, quiet kid M9 in my, at my house. I don't own either. Or, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's not what I said to him, but like it's along the lines of what I said to him. I think what I did was like, oh, sorry, you know, I were you expecting someone who's rather quiet going, like, it's like no, 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 we're not, we talk, I talk quite a bit, right? My my ability, I know he was just joking, and we're we're pretty tight, you know, but like, you know, it, you know how I how, already the story if you've seen the video about the people who thought autism and Down syndrome were the same thing, right? But, like, some people will be, you don't look autistic, right? Or you don't, some people would say that unironically. I have to think, is it just more than those two co-workers of mine, right? Because, or some people will be like, you don't seem autistic, right? It's very interesting the words they use to say, you know, describe how autistic I am. Right here, I'm gonna let you know how autistic I am. I'm growing an onion. It's over on my uh, counter right now. Well, I had to close the window because you know for filming this video, but it is there right fucking now. And I casually asked Google. I'm like, "Hey Google, um, how does one breed their own species of onion?" That isn't fucking autistic. I don't know what is. I, I'm just like, it, I was literally talking to my mom. I'm like, wouldn't it be cool? If someone just spent their whole life making their own species of onion, that'd be pretty fun. And, yes, yeah, so, 
Yeah, people just, I find it rather, you know, patronizing about my you know, condition in general. Uh, for people to be, to feign concern for, I don't know, what, their own self-serving goals, as opposed to actually working with and, you know, knowing and getting to know people like me. I know I'm a bit of, you know, self-right, you know, self-righteous asshole, but like, that just proves we're like everyone else. We have the good, we have the bad, and we have the pretty funny, right? Because I'm not even telling you about some of the shit in my childhood, right? That is legitimately funny to me as an adult, right? Maybe I'll save that for another video, maybe about 10 minutes, but like, yeah, these are kind of people I have met and I don't like, and people I hope I never meet, because they're just so fucking annoying. All right, have a good one.